Hi, welcome to the Canadian City and Southern Model Railroad. Today's video is about a couple things. One, some progress. For example, Section 3 is now all wired up, the fascia boards painted and all the controls are in. A lot of bench work has been done on Section 4, which I'll show in a minute. But the main thing I want to show today is the complex little section, Section 5. As I was saying, Section 3 is pretty much done electrically and mechanically. All the switches are in, all the switch controls are in, i got to trim a few ties, and I've got some rail on the siding to the logging area to do. Section 4, the bench work is all now done. The turntable is not glued in yet. I'll finish it at the workbench. Turns out that's much easier. Some of the cork's done, but I've got to order some more as I've run out of half inch. The mine area has been moved closer to the front to make it easier to couple and uncouple once the bind's in place and the scenery's all in. Although the concept is point to point, I have extended a line here in the back to bring the track work back down to the height of Canadian City so that I have a continuous loop to run. This switch was moved farther over. This switch was moved. Everything in here had to be rebuilt. Section 4 was extended. And an extra little siding for some coal industry was in here for a small coal mine. There will be bridges and a stream coming through here. and on to section five. As I mentioned in my last video, section five was a lift out. Well, it isn't anymore. After the changes to section four, section five has been basically totally redone. This is for several reasons. First of all, it needs to be able to roll not only into the room, but out of the room. It also needs to be able to be removed very quickly. The other thing is I wanted to have a little small gorge here for some more bridges, just for scenic interest. But the main thing is, is I need to be able to remove it quickly and to get it out of the way so that I can get in and out of the room safely. That's all there is to it. Now you'll notice that there's all kinds of funny angles on Section 5. I tried to set the saw up to get angles that are fairly common, but that just didn't work. If I had done it that way, it would have either stuck coming into the room or rolling out of the room, and neither of those was acceptable. So I simply laid all the pieces out a few at a time, marked the angles, cut them on the saw, gradually rebuilt it all, and had to make quite a few changes to finally get it to where it would lock in place, the rails would line up quickly and come out even quicker. So that's section five. It's on a roll around and later on I'll add some back and sides and a shelf for storage.
couple weeks ago, I realized I wasn't going to have enough micro spikes to finish my layout. So I called micro engineering and they told me that although their tooling is all up and running, they can't find the proper size staples anymore to run through their tools and they weren't sure when micro spikes would be available. So that gave me an idea. I decided I might try to make my own. So with a fair amount of trial and error, here's what I came up with. I've got a motor tool, some regular old staples, just regular old office staples, a pair of pliers, and a hobby knife. And here's what I do. First, I'm going to make a little groove, maybe two of them, down the middle of the staple. This is going to determine the length of the spike. On most surfaces, especially if you're going through a wooden tie in the cork road bed, the length is not too critical. Now I'm going to cut off a section that's slightly less than the width of the pliers. Grip them in the pliers, and I didn't cut all the way through. I'm going to bend them back and forth and break them. That leaves a nice sharp point to go into the tie. Now I'm going to turn them around. And I'm going to cut another groove quite close to the angle. And break off the excess. Gonna move them out a little bit. Make sure they're really gripped tight and grind them down to the size of the spike head. Now because I'm going to be spiking code 55 and 70 rail, maybe even one or two short sections of code 40, I want to grind these spike heads fairly short so that the spike Grip the tie, it will grip the rail nice and tight. Now I'm going to take them and turn them 90 degrees and just kind of polish off the top of the spike head so they're nice and flat and don't stick up quite so much. Now I'm going to separate the spikes. I'm going to do this on a nice hard piece of wood. I'm laying them down with the spike head down so that I can very easily take my knife and using the grooves that were in the staples to begin with as a guide, very easily separate the individual spikes. And if you repeat this process for an hour or so, you find you have a fair amount of spikes. 
and I'm going to lead them. Well, thanks for watching today, and have a really good rest of your day.